Hi everyone, my name is Gabby and I am from Maine and I have moved all the way out here to Oahu. So I would like to share some of my knowledge on how to get your dog from the mainland out to Hawaii. This is him. <laughs> he is absolutely gorgeous. Yes, his name is Moose. And he is my pride and joy. Okay. So in this video, I'm just basically going to talk about what it took to get us to get our dog from Maine all the way to the big island of Hawaii. And I'll also talk about what it took to island hop over to Oahu, but I don't know all of the paperwork getting to that island specifically, or this one. Um, I just know about the paperwork process for getting to the big island. So that's what I'll talk about. So for starters, I had to make sure that my dog had his first rabies vaccination. He had his distemper and everything. That's not a requirement, but just make sure your dog's healthy and vaccinated because you're gonna be doing a lot of traveling so they can get exposed to all sorts of different things. So the first step was getting his second rabies shot. So he'd already had his first one before we even decided we were moving out to Hawaii. Um, and then we got his second one this was all while he was under a year old. He didn't turn a year until a month before we moved to Hawaii. That was not a problem. Um, the animal just needs to be older than nine weeks, if I'm correct, but they're gonna need to be older than nine weeks if you're going through this entire process anyway. So he got his second rabies shot, and then after his second rabies shot, you have to wait 30 days until they can get their blood test. And it is called an FAVN, OIE test, I think it is, your vet will know. Um, basically what they do is they take a sample of your dog's blood and they send it to a lab out in Kansas or Texas, I think are the only ones that do the testing. And they're basically checking to see if your dog has enough rabies antibodies in their bloodstream. If they don't, they get another booster of the rabies and then they do another titer, but it has to be 30 days after they get that vaccine. Um, and then another 30 days from then, they can be on the island. So definitely give yourself some time. I think the whole process took us about like five months or so, but it doesn't need to take that long. That's just how much time I gave us to do that. All right, so one thing I will say is the FABN test is pretty expensive. I did not expect it and I'm glad my credit card had a high enough limit because when I went in, they I thought it was just gonna be a regular blood test and it ended up being over $500. So definitely make sure you budget for that. It is not cheap at all getting your dog out to Hawaii. Hawaii itself is not a cheap place. So I think I spent in total about $1,000 getting him out here. It might've been more, it might've been less. I didn't exactly do the math, but it's pretty close. And the next step I would say in the process, you could also do this before the other ones, is determining whether your dog can go in cabin or in baggage. Um, I was terrified of my dog going in baggage. I know there are very rare instances where things happen and dogs pass away or have a medical emergency, um, but I knew if I could avoid it, I really did not want to put him under. So <laughs> what we ended up doing, is he's about 22 to 25 pounds, he fluctuates. Um, so he was small enough that he could go in cabin for Alaska Airlines because they were the only ones that would go all the way from Boston to Seattle to Kona. Um, Hawaiian Airlines didn't. So that's another thing to consider is airline. I should have talked about that before actually. Um, but picking an airline is super important, depends on where you're flying from. We were flying from Boston, so we needed to find an airline. I mean, we could have gone with different ones, but I wanted to find one that, you know, went to both places. Hawaiian didn't go from Boston to Seattle. Um, so I picked Alaska because I knew if he also couldn't go in cabin with us, they have an amazing reputation for animals going under the plane. So that is the one we picked. And we also had to pick either that one or I think it was United for um, Kona specifically because Kona only had one vet 
that was able to come do airport inspections and they need to come to the airport to inspect your dog before you leave the airport. Like they literally won't let you leave. They will send you to Oahu or they'll send you back to the mainland if they can't get a vet out to check out your dog. So that is super important. Do research on that before even looking at plane tickets or whatever. I knew I had to spend a little bit more money on our plane tickets because again, I had to go with that specific route and I picked premium economy so that we could have more leg room because again, I had him at my feet and it, <laughs> planes don't have a lot of space anyway, and it, but I wasn't doing first class. So that's what we did. And it actually made things a lot less stressful because you also get like drinks and food when you're in premium business economy, which is really nice. So after you have picked your airline and kind of figured out if they're going under the plane, if they're going in cabin, then you can think about carrier. Um, carriers need to be either soft-sided or hard-sided. They each have their own dimensions. Um, hard, I think, is a little bit smaller than soft because soft can bend. That depends on your airline. You'll have to go look at their websites to find regulations and whatnot. Um, I know Alaska, at least, was very lenient with us for in-cabin. They didn't even look at the carrier that we had, uh, didn't even look to make sure the dog could like stand or turn around. They just saw him and they're like, oh my God, what is he doing? And they're like, let him out, let him go run around. It's a long flight. I'm like, okay. I just wanted to make sure you guys like saw that he could fit. I wanted, I didn't want that to be an issue. But she's like, oh my God, no. So we got him out and um, they really didn't care at all. Um, we actually went to the airport in advance before our flight to like make sure this wouldn't be an issue. But the carrier that we chose is this one from, I think it's called Maskion, Maskon, something like that from Amazon. And it was recommended to me by a pet parrot Facebook group page um, of people that have flown with their animals before. And I love this so much because it totally unzips like this part zips over it kind of looks like that there we go and like this and each side actually unzips to give the dog more room this is kind of difficult right now but to give more room if you can see that like he was just kind of sprawled out throughout the whole flight and everybody was super nice with him the check-in process was very easy and I can actually include pictures or videos here in a second, but when we had him in this, once we got in the plane, my boyfriend was sitting next to me, so I used his leg room and I opened this one up and then I opened this one up so he could like sprawl. He's a long boy, so he liked to sprawl. Um, and that worked really, really well for him. He wasn't super anxious in it, um, but whenever he would kind of start waking up and like, wanting out a little bit, I would take the pamphlet from in front of my seat and just fan him with it. And that actually worked wonders. It calmed him down. He just went right back to sleep. So <laughs> definitely do that if your dog starts getting like wiggy on the plane. And along with that, I will say that if you can get medication for your dog that's going in cabin, definitely do that. Um, if they're going under the plane, that's not an option because they need to be able to regulate themselves. Um, and that's just sedatives are just not recommended by vets for pets going under the plane. But Moose's vet gave him a prescription of gabapentin and trazodone. And we had tried it out months or so in advance. And the perfect concoction for him was gabapentin and the trazodone together. Um, we would give it to him the night before the flight and then right before the flight was what our vet recommended for us. But definitely if you're going to give the sedatives, try them out before so you know how your dog reacts because we knew that he would start waking up after like three to four hours after he got them. So we would just give him a little bit more to hold him over because the whole flight was six hours in total. Okay, so after you have all of that decided and you have your dog's blood results back, they just called, the vet office called to let me know that they were in. They don't send them directly to the vet. They send them directly to the state of Hawaii. So you don't have to worry about that. They send them to them and that is all settled. So then our next step was to fill out the neighboring island inspection permit on their website and just kind of check off boxes, write down all of our information. And there was a money order check we needed to send as well for the fee 
I think it was $165, which wasn't horrible. Um, and so we just mailed that up with all of the correct paperwork that they needed and sent that in. They don't need the health certificate in the paperwork that you send because you'll be sending this in advance. I sent, I think I sent it like two or three months in advance and you get the health permit like right before you leave. So then after you send all of this information into them, I kept checking in with them to see where we were at because I hadn't gotten a permit back and they said they were really backed up so it would take a few days and or they would get you the permit like two days before you got to the island. I was like getting really nervous because I'm like I have no way of printing this before we get there like we'll be in Seattle like this just isn't working for me. Um, so I was super nervous about that but we ended up getting it like a month before we arrived. Printed it and had no issues boarding with it and the health certificate but make sure you have both of those when you're trying to get on the plane because if you don't have them they're not going to let you on. They're just, they're not. Another thing I will say is they have pet relief stations in the airport which is super nice. Um, Boston Logan had one right near our gate which was awesome and then SeaTac had one but you had to take a train to get from the gate which was kind of a hassle um, but we had a lot of time there because our flight was delayed so it was fine um, but moose did end up actually taking a crap in the airport but people are super cool about it as long as you pick it up and like clean up after them they think it's hilarious so when we actually arrived in hawaii on the big island um, we walked off the plane onto the tarmac and just kind of stood aside. I asked the USDA agent like, hey, what do I do now? And he had me just wait and someone eventually came and got me and brought me to the vet tech and they just looked over my paperwork, looked at him. It took like less than five minutes. It was so easy. Um, and then we were able to go on our merry way. So as I said, the Big Island didn't end up working out for us. Our property that we bought was just not what I thought it was and it just wasn't working out over there so we did decide to move over to Oahu and we are now in our apartment and just living it up. I absolutely love it here but I will kind of explain the process it took to island hop with him. Okay so I decided that we were moving over here and I looked into which airport we decided to fly out of Hilo because that's just the side of the island that we were on. So we selected that airport like a week in advance and then I talked to the agent and they were like, yeah, he is not gonna be under 25 pounds with the carrier included. I was heartbroken, so he had to go under the plane actually, which was traumatizing, but it ended up being all fine. It, it was totally fine. Hawaiian Airlines is amazing. Um, I'll actually insert a video right here right now. They were super sweet with my baby checking on him. The check-in lady also kept saying, like kept referring to him as my baby, not my dog, which I absolutely loved because he is my child. Um, but they were super cool with that whole check-in process. It was very easy. I paid a fee of like 65 bucks and that was it. Oh, I forgot to talk about fees earlier. Alaskan Airlines had a $100 fee every leg of the flight. So from our flight to Boston, it. Yeah, from our flight to Boston to Seattle was 100, and then from Boston, Seattle to Kona, it was another 100. Um, and that that's pretty cheap. So basically after that, we check him in, security comes over, make sure his kennel is secure. Um, we picked a relatively small size kennel. I don't have it anymore because we actually got rid of it because we don't need it anymore. But it was definitely bigger than the soft carrier. Um, he fit in it pretty nice. It had bolts on the side. They didn't care if they were metal or plastic. They just need to be secure. And then they zip tied him and then they took him away. And I did absolutely cry, even though it was a 40 minute flight because I just, I kept thinking the worst. Um, he'd never been alone, even though he was super duper healthy and whatnot, but he's so clingy. So I was terrified. Basically the whole time sitting in the airport, my boyfriend was just trying to comfort me because I was so upset. Um, I did have an air tag in his kennel so that I could like sit on my phone and like make sure he got on the plane with me and I saw he was on the plane. So it just, that definitely made me feel a lot better. So if you're anxious like me, put an air tag in with them because 
it just made it so much better. I could see that he was like in the air with me, which was really nice. But basically after that, we got to Honolulu and we landed and then we went to baggage where we were told to go. Um, and we just stood by the baggage wheel, grabbed our stuff and they came right out with him and he was totally fine. He did throw up a little, which we found out later because of stuff in the carrier, but you have to make sure you have like a towel in there, which will absorb throw up or pee if they decide they need to do that. Um, so the gate agent saw how like glad I was to see him and I was just trying to get on him. So they cut the zip ties off so I could finally like pick him up and hold him. Um, and then we left the airport and <laughs> went on our merry way to our apartment and the rest is history. But yeah, that is all I can think of. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments and I will get to them. Um, if, if I can help you move any easier than I did, I would love to. Um, this was very stressful and it took me about like six, seven months of researching. So I think I know a lot about it. Um, so if you guys need any help, let me know and I would love to. Mahalo.